Hi there, uh, my name is Sophie Desch. I'm a Global Voices Metcalf Fellow and a resident of International House. On behalf of my fellow residents and staff, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the International House of the University of Chicago. Uh, today I'm gonna to be interviewing, interviewing Barty Cabrera, the director of the Southeast Asian Music Ensemble. His ensemble will be holding a concert here at International House on Sunday, March 4th at 2 p.m. This concert is presented by the Global Voices Performing Arts and Lecture Series and the University Department of Music. And it is supported in part by the Brenda K. and Anil Sinha Fund for Indian Performing Arts at International House. Our Global Voices Public Programming Series advances cross-cultural understanding and opportunities for civic discourse on community, national, and world affairs through music and dance performances, films, lecture, conferences, and roundtable discussions. You can find inter information about these programs on the literature table at the front entrance. We also have a mailing list for you to receive announcements about all of our exciting upcoming events. And now I have a few questions for you. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about your ensemble, perhaps the missions and goals that go into it? So the, the South Asian Music Ensemble is a, a special repertory ensemble in the Department of Music. And um, the primary focus has changed a little bit over the years. Um, I should quickly mention that there's two directors for this ensemble. The other director is, uh, her name is Meenu Pasupati, and we co-direct the ensemble now. Initially, she was the uh, sole director of the ensemble. And um, for the most part, we focus on Indian classical music. Um, now, in South Asia, there are actually two traditions of classical music which are separate and have run parallel for centuries. Um, they're similar but different, and they have their own repertory, their own style and approach to music. So, um, Minu was trained in South Indian classical music, what's called Carnatic music, and she's primarily a vocalist. And so when she um, became the director of the group when it started, that was the primary focus, to teach South Indian classical vocal music. Um, I am trained in the North Indian style of classical music, so it's a different tradition. It's called Hindustani music, and I'm primarily an instrumentalist, not a vocalist. I play the tabla, which is a, a, a drum in North India. So now we sort of um, try to juxtapose both classical music traditions together, um, primarily through teaching repertory, but we also do um, workshops with individual students to help them understand the intricacies of the music as well, because you know, classical music is also very um, Improvise as well, so um, we do a little bit of both. But for the most part, repertory, North and South Asian classical music styles. See, and um, speaking of the students that participate in the ensemble, could you tell us a little bit more about them? Whether they're graduate, undergraduate, the experience level coming in. It's really a mixed bag, and it's one of kind of the challenges, but also the joys of the ensemble. We are not only open to um, students, but also there are members of the community in High Park who are. Part of the ensemble. Some of them, uh, we have a member who um, I think grew up uh, in India. Um, uh, she, I think she may actually be from the area here, but you know she's fluent in a number of Indian languages and she's very familiar with music. And then we have other people who just sort of stumbled across music through whatever their yoga instructor and they came to class in class and they're a part of the ensemble now. So we have people like that who are members of the group. Um, and then we have uh, many students as well. The students are the, the main body of people in the ensemble. And I would say it's a combination of, of um, graduate students and undergraduate students, but mostly undergrad. In, our, in my experience, in the few years that I've been doing this ensemble, the undergrads tend to come from uh, specialized uh, in non-humanities subjects here on campus. But some of them have been learning in classical music since they were three or four. You know, they're from New Jersey or they're from Austin, but their mother and father are Indian background and they were immersed in this music being part of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And so they come to us as sort of almost semi-professionals really. So we have a combination of people who just come in um, for the experience and some who have been doing this for years. And um, even though we have an audition process each, each year at the beginning of the year, we actually don't really um, deny anyone access to this music. We try to accommodate everyone and find sort of a common denominator that we can work with for everybody. So it's a combination of all those things. Interesting. And maybe a little bit more about the music. Uh, could you tell us maybe what the audience is going to be in store for in terms of techniques, instruments, styles? So um, in the last few years, we have veered away from proper Indian classical music. Uh, and that's because for me, even though I'm trained in Indian classical music, um, my work as an ethnomusicologist, the graduate student here, is actually on folk music 
and Bernanke music in a very specific part of India. And so when I was added on to the group to direct, they thought it would be a nice way for me to join the ensemble by helping to um, expose the ensemble to non-classical music. So the last few years we've been doing non-classical things. So this year is a sort of return to full classical music. So uh, we're exploring uh, various genres, various uh, texts, various languages, various instruments within the North and South Indian classical traditions. But all the repertoire that we're in today, this uh, year rather, this academic year, is all Indian classical music. Interesting. And I read in the program notes that there are two distinct styles of Indian music, uh, the Raga and Tala styles, I believe. So Raga and Tala are sort of the, um, you could say the foundational uh, things which all Indian classical music is based upon. Um, I mentioned earlier that there are two traditions of Indian classical music, uh, North and the South. Both of them use these ideas of raga and dhamma. So raga is sort of a really complex sort of melodic framework around which Indian classical music works, and dhamma is a rhythmic foundation around which Indian music works. Both of these uh, systems are, are highly complex, and the North and the South interpret them in slightly different ways, but both of them are the building blocks for the music. Interesting. So obviously there's a lot of um, interesting cultural integration going on. Mm -hmm. And obviously the mission here at iHouse is to foster cross-cultural understanding through cultural exchange. Um, so why, in your opinion, are events like this one important for promoting this kind of cross-cultural understanding? I mean, I think it's, it's really important because, um, you know, for me personally, I can tell you that I grew up uh, in a household where music was always played. I, began learning music on piano and guitar as a child. I didn't like any classical music. I'm a, I'm a Midwesterner through and through. I grew up here. My parents are Bangladeshi descent. I didn't like any classical music until I was probably um, a senior in high school and approaching college. And there was something uh, liberating about the music because it was familiar and also not familiar. Um, I think uh, if you like jazz, for example, um, the improvisation, especially in North Indian classical music, is so deep. There, there, you know, there's, it's akin to jazz. There's something there that's very, that's very uh, approachable and yet quite different. So I think Indian classical music has that sort of uh, magic to it. You don't even have to understand it to really appreciate it. And you can't say that a lot about a lot of art musics in the world. I think so many of them really require a strong understanding of the music to even sort of get past the beauty, get to the beauty rather of the music, uh, in my opinion. But I think Indian classical music is just very easily accessible in that way, and, and it, it can be a great sort of uh, a type of music to, to play for a very diverse audience and, and get a positive response out of it. Great. Um, well, that wraps up all my questions, but thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. I really look forward to the series.